recording. Okay. Hey, Michael. How you doing? Thanks for joining us today. I'm very good. Thank you for having me. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. It's our pleasure to have you. Thanks for joining us all the way uh, from Denmark. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah, yeah. What, what, a, what time is it over there, by the way? Uh, it isn't that late, actually. It's, it's uh, quarter to nine now. So. Quarter to nine. Okay, cool. Well, you know, uh, I stumbled across your blog and I uh, read some of your stuff, and it's, it's really great. Um, tell Thank us you. more about your background in conversion and, and all of copywriting, and what, what, what got you interested in this whole field, and, and a little bit of your background as well. Well, I, I studied at uh, Copenhagen Business School, and I was actually studying to be a translator and interpreter. Danish, English, English, Danish, and I, tra I, I started like a one-man company, and I translated a bunch of different texts and translated a book, and that kind of made, made me realize that I, <laughs> I, I didn't really want to spend the rest of my life, you know, kind of uh, translating other people's uh, crappy uh, texts, so okay. um, I kind of started looking for something different, and then uh, I got kind of a part-time job at, um, or a fl freelance job at an online agency. Uh, this is like seven years ago, eight years ago, and I I hadn't I knew nothing about online at all, and then I just got totally into it. I was so fascinated by it because there was this medium all of a sudden where you know copy and communication just was you know had 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 a direct measurable impact. Um, and so this was this was when when SEO was just you know becoming a thing. So I kind of became this SEO copywriter guy, and uh, so I started working full time as soon as I kind of. Finished up a master thesis, and then uh, as time went on, I got more and more kind of interested in, in what happens after you get traffic to a website because it kind of seemed kind of pointless throwing you know tons of traffic into a website if you can't make them do what you want them to do. And clients were kind of always asking, so saying, yeah, so you got us all this traffic, that's cool. We haven't sold it anymore. What are you gonna do with that? Right. <laughs> and uh, around that time, I also figured out that uh, you know you could, you could actually test stuff. On the internet and find out what really works. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do that was that I read all this marketing literature about copywriting and stuff, and there are all these rules, and you know, all these all these marketers were saying you should always do this, you should never do that, and I, I was trying to do the same things, and you know, nothing. A lot of the time, nothing happened. I was like, well, I mean, I'm doing everything right, and then I started testing by myself in order to find out what really works, and then um, in order to, you know dedicate full time to doing that. I, I quit the agency and I haven't really looked back since. I've just been kind of doing my own thing as a freelancer and in the beginning I was very focused on copywriting. I still am. I love that. But uh, now I'm kind of uh, a bit broader with everything that has to do with, with optimization and testing and um, strategy uh, overall. <laughs> so, so let me get this straight here. So you're saying you read all these copywriting books, you tried all this sort of stuck within the rules realized that it wasn't sort of working the way they suggested it was going to work and then you started and uh, you discovered this obviously by looking at the analytics and looking at your sales and said hey you know start really moving the needle as much as I thought it would and then that sort of got you on the whole path of kind of experimenting and doing these things on your own is that right yeah totally totally and and, and so there are a lot of startups that are maybe listening or watching they want to experiment with the way they put their landing page headlines together how they frame their CTA, what, what kind of offers that they want to press out there. What are some of the easy easy tips that startups should be doing, tools that they should be using based on some of the stuff that you've stumbled yeah, on? How do, you, how do you dip your toes in the water? Yeah, well, I think uh, <clears throat> kind of the whole thing revolves around being kind of curious. You know, <laughs> I think that's where everything starts. You're like, damn, you know, you always have the questions. I wonder if this headline, that headline, or why aren't people converting or why are you know, they getting stuck at this corner of the website? So that's kind of you know, a natural kind of urge to, get to, to understand why, are they, why is this happening and can we actually you know, uh, make our, our website function better? And then I think another important thing is, it changed the way I, I work and the way I think anyways, is, is to focus not so much on how to make you know, like a beautiful website or a better website, but to focus on like what are the decisions we want people to make because that's really what optimization is about is about getting more people to make the right decision and there's a tendency that you kind of focus on the wrong things if you just sit down and look at the page and say okay so how are we going to make this page better it makes a lot more sense to kind of focus on okay so what are what are the decisions we want people to make on this particular page for example and then what can we do in order to make them do that and uh, some of the things that I see is that uh, while there Often is a correlation between radical changes and and you know radical 
impact, there isn't necessarily a direct correlation between the two. In order for a change to really impact conversion, it has to have an impact on the mind of the prospect. And kind of what I've identified is that a lot of times if you tweak mission critical elements, you know, you can get a large investment on the time you spent testing and optimizing. So mission critical elements could, for example, be a headline, you know. I mean, a headline is one of the main things people are going inter to interact with. You can be like, it's one of the few pieces of copy where you can be like 99% sure that people are actually going to read it and you know, <laughs> form some kind of opinion about it. Right. Then I would also identify uh, f forms, for example, sign-up forms uh, as, as mission-critical mission elements. So often people have to interact with your form if it's on a landing page for a, whatever free trial sign or whatever it is they kind of that's that's the mission critical element they have to interact with that element in order to be able to be able to do whatever you want them to do so right. small changes can have a large impact also like the ultimate low hanging fruit that i see in optimization is call to action buttons incredible impact so if if i were to kind of say where you get the biggest return uh, on like testing elements on a given landing page, the call to action is one of the main elements. So both gotcha. design and the copy you use, the messaging you use, has, has huge impact. Gotcha. Uh, as far and, and those, as... And those are small things. You can quickly change an H1 tag or H1 headline. You could quickly change an A uh, button, an A tag for a CTA. Yeah. And those aren't, those aren't things that's going to require a startup to spend two days or three days implementing. You can do that every day, literally. It sounds like it would take five or ten minutes. Am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it depends on the case. And I, I mean, it always makes sense to have like a clear idea of, of what you're testing, what you want the out outcome to be, uh, and why you would do it. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so it may, I mean, you will usually have better test results the more you kind of uh, the better hypothesis you have. Sometimes it only takes a couple of minutes to find the right solution, but uh, but I mean, sometimes even just coming up with a new button copy can take you know several hours. Or longer than that, and testing it for sure can take a hell of a long time. But but yeah, yeah. The point is that you don't have to like change the whole website, do a radical redesign in order to to see lifts. And in a lot of cases, in in, in my experience, that's one of the, the cool things about landing optimization is that it, <clears throat> it makes sense to experiment with like smaller areas of your website, get learning, and then implement that afterwards. Mm -hmm. And what I see is like a lot of the kind of radical redesigns of entire websites. In a lot of cases, that's an agency just going, well, you know, it looks dated. We'll make it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever defines better is, you know, is not being defined. You know, so you just change it. Well, now it's red instead of orange, and that will cost you two hundred fifty thousand or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of cases, it makes, you know, it makes a lot of sense to get as much data and learning as possible, and then implement the whole thing uh, in the end. So what's the best way for startups to start collecting that data? So, I mean, it, like Amul mentioned, it could be real quick and easy to make a change, but how do you A-B test it and get the, the, you know, the, the data on your hypothesis so that you're not shooting in the dark? Yeah, so one of the main things is to have a sample size that's large enough to get you know, uh, valid data. Uh, and that's going to probably be an issue for a lot of startups. Yeah, good point. So, yes. Yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, so it makes sense to, to kind of, you know, Plan your tests where you know that you're going to have a lot of traffic. So if you're doing a campaign, you got a special landing page that's going to get a lot of traffic. You know for a fact. Then you know, con uh, planning your tests for those pages that are going to get traffic could make sense. Or maybe uh, an element that goes across the whole website, uh, a global element. Or you know, if you know you get tons of traffic on your homepage, you can start there. Because you know, I mean, there, it's not illegal to perform, uh, you know, to, to perform tests with with, with uh, insufficient data. <laughs> Nobody's going to come after you, but you know, it, it can seriously make you, you know. Well, what what is the smallest sample size, in your opinion? Would you say like, you know, especially if it's a young startup and they, have, they don't have a ton of p traffic coming? Would you say like test an element once a week because that at least is a week. Well, I mean, there are a lot of different things that go into validity, and we we could talk for hours about that. But uh, and it's really difficult to kind of set a, a, a specific, you know, uh, this is the minimum amount of visitors you would need for a test because it really depends on what you're testing and how much of an impact the changes have. But I'd say, I mean, if if you if you and and not unless you're doing global. Uh, tests, you know, that, that have an impact across the website, then it makes more sense to look at how much impact or how much traffic you get to the individual page where you change something and not just across the whole website. So, but I'd, I'd say you, I mean, you need a couple of thousand visitors uh, in order for it to really be fun and make sense. You, you, could, you could run tests for a long time. I mean, 
you know, <laughs> you could do that easily, but uh, if it, it makes a lot more fun, and you can get better data quicker if you have, you know, reasonable uh, sample sizes. So, uh, so that's also the kind of the story of the chicken or the egg, you know. So, do we start optimizing now, or do we do SEO and other kind of things to get, you know, get traffic in there? But so right. that's one aspect is is like the, the straight up split testing. But there are tons of other ways to get, you know, insights and data. And I think kind of like the most important thing is that you're just, you know, you're thinking about it constantly. You know, you you're keeping your ears open and stuff. So, by talking to potential customers, there's a huge amount of data there. You know, interviewing people in your target audience, really getting to understand them, uh, just kind of being aware of your own um, your own behavior online. You know, uh, I get those experiences once in a while. We're like, damn. For example, like, no, hell no, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting reaction. Why did I react that way? Uh, analytics data, of course, but again, you'll need to have some traffic. Well, so here's here's the problem, Michael. It's just that the, all this optimization stuff. There's so many things we could be testing. Mm. It's really, you know, it's almost like this sort of like, yeah, where do you start? There's all this crap I could be doing. It's really complicated. And I'm just trying to whittle it down yeah. and make it as simple and as, uh, you know, as simple as possible and and really as actionable as possible for startups. Because yeah. a lot of times startups landing pages don't change very often. You know, the actual site itself doesn't change very often because mm -hmm. they're working on the product itself or, you know, they're working on other aspects of the startup. We, we've talked yeah. to a lot of people who say, oh, our, our homepage is outdated. It doesn't even say what we do anymore. <laughs> and it may only be a month old. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, keeping keeping it up to date, of course, and, and I mean, there's kind of a natural thing that sometimes happens. You get too busy and you kind of forget about your own, <laughs> your own website, your own stuff. Yeah. But I think, I mean... You, you, you got to start with something. You got to start somewhere. So you probably start lean, you know, and get something up there. But then I just be aware and uh, of, of constantly trying to make it better, you know. And, and one thing you start working on is the messaging, the value proposition. You know, is it right. are we actually clearly communicating what 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 our product will do for people, or are we just using some you know hypey, fluffy copy, you know, uh, that's really hard to understand. Okay, well let, let's get into that. Well, in your opinion, what's what's what are some of the you know vocabulary? What are some of the jargon that you would use when you're trying to really sell the benefits? Like, would you is it start off the headline? You know, seven benefits and blah 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 using our prime. I mean, what, what, what kind of uh, what kind of copy would you use? I'm sure you've well, read I mean, a lot about this. I think a, good, uh, a very very simple technique that I use uh, all the time is just to start with the word get, you know, get. and then we get and then work from there. And get kind of forces you to really focus on what you're giving away and what people are going to receive, you know, from whatever it is you're offering them. It's it's, it's ridiculously st stupidly simple, but it's a great technique. It really forces you to think in the right way. Okay, and give, us some, like, give us some examples here. Uh, well, you could get uh, get seven uh, uh, optimization principles that okay, right uh, there, you right know, so influence your own. Gotcha, or, gotcha. So uh, get a number of something. So well, it doesn't have to be a, a number. Quantity. Ideally, because it reminds me of the list posts you see a lot of bloggers use. You know, 15 mm. tips on losing weight, blah, blah, blah. Seven ways that you can improve your headline. You know, it's that yeah, well, similar sort of value. Yeah, but I'd say with the list, that's more for like this. I would say there's a big difference between writing headlines for or titles for blog posts and for, you know, a product offer like a, a sales, you know, for sales copy. So with the lists and stuff, I'd be careful because a lot of times you'll say seven reasons to pick our product, and you'd be like, okay, uh, couldn't you just tell me one of them now? I mean, do I have to, you know, figure it out for myself and read it? Mm -hmm. So the more the, the more the more clear you can be about uh, the value you're providing and why it's relevant for your business, just the better. So so maybe I mean, if you use the, the, the get angle, you might not end up with with um, with a headline that starts with get, but it'll just force you in the right direction. But some of the best performing headlines I've written have had the word get in there. So for this, okay. for this session, it could be, you know, get uh, get actionable uh, landing page optimization tips for whatever uh, your startup company. So you know that would be that would be a very very clear value proposition. Another one would be not quite as clear, more creative would be. Um, what are you doing wrong on your startup landing page? So that would be an angle that a lot of people use. In my experience, that one would, would in all likelihood, not perform as well because you're still like, well, what the hell does that mean? Um, so what are you what doing wrong is not as is not as it doesn't convert as good as get in your opinion. Well, it depends on the context. I mean, but I mean, so. Okay, so there are like three three angles that I see being used uh, very often, and I see a lot of, especially copywriters, having like a very strong opinion about which one always works. Okay. And I would say that that's 
you know, you have to be a lot more <laughs> agile. Uh, so one of the angles is that uh, kind of pseudoscience thing with like the the, the brain. If you, ch if you challenge the brain, it will not stop till it has the answer. Therefore, asking questions will always make people, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the second one is loss aversion. You know, you know people, people would rather avoid losing something that they have rather than getting right. something new. Yeah. And then yeah, the third I've heard one of that is... that quite a bit. Yep, yep. And then the third one would be, uh, you know, the, the kind of what's in it for me thing. You know, give me a good reason to say yes, actually. And uh, I've, I've performed tests with these different angles on a lot of different uh, landing pages, especially with headlines. And... Yeah. What I kind of consistently see is that on the first place is the clear benefit, you know, what's in it for me angle, followed up by loss aversion and the third place uh, questions. So uh -huh. I'm not making up a new I'm not making up a new best practice rule here. <laughs> right, right, no, I like that. All right, so so let, let's recap here. So in your opinion, uh, you know, what's in it for me is definitely uh, the kind of mindset you want to be in when you want to. Uh, come up with different things to test. And number two is, uh, what's the loss, or rather, what, what, how could you, um, how could you communicate a potential loss to a person to get them to to get grab their attention? Is that right? Yeah, you you, you probably highlight how they would uh, avoid losing something they don't want avoid to lose. Avoid losing something. Okay. And then the lastly is the, uh, I'm sorry, is what the was question? the last one? Is the question. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, what are some good examples there? Well, I mean, um, uh, well, I have, it would be easier if I could show some case studies, but yeah. I, I think I'd put it in another way. I'd say, well, before you said in my opinion, I would change that to in my experience from testing, not my opinion. Okay. But, um, but I'd say what I, what I usually do is I, if I should choose, if I had to choose a default, I'd go for the clear you know, benefit, what's in it for me, what's in it for benefit. you angle. Yeah. That often uh, works well. And I see a correlation between like the behavior online that I find in my own behavior and I've seen again and again yeah. uh, in other people and also just from search patterns and stuff is that in a lot of cases you're, you're looking for answers or you're looking for a solution online, you know, if you're on Google. And in a lot of cases maybe you'll have, you know, uh, you'll be doing comparison shopping, whatever you want to call it. You maybe have ten different, you know, um, uh, what are they called, tabs open in, in your browser and you're going, Ch -ch -ch -ch, you're making comparisons. So right. the clear benefit that you can understand just like that, you go, wow, that's relevant, that provides a value. Well, in many cases, you know, make you get involved. That's my hypothesis anyway. Okay. So I see that working out very well in many cases. Uh, loss aversion works well uh, in some cases. It can be a lot better, but that's when you have a very, very specific thing where, you, where in all likelihood people will, you know, want to avoid losing that. So I think I can think of an example where that one did better. Uh, I, I did uh, uh, some landing page optimization for uh, an SEO tool. And so I think we changed it from... I can't really remember what the original one was. I remember what the trade treatment one was, and that was uh, avoid losing rankings, traffic, and money. And the, you know, so <laughs> if you're doing a lot of SEO and stuff, yeah, well, yeah, then yeah. you're pretty goddamn sure you don't want to lose yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So that one did well, but that was because it was the right thing in the conversion scenario in the context. Right. Questions are very misunderstood. I think the dangerous thing about questions is that you know, well, we we want to supervise our prospects' thinking. You know, that's, that's a quote. I can't remember who said it. I love that quote, though. We want to supervise the, you know, the thought process that people are going through. With questions, that can be difficult because you, you put, in lots of times, you're just posing a question and you can't control what the answer is. Maybe they'll go out on a tangent and go, oh, I remember the competitor. Yeah, they were pretty good. Let's go with them. But right. questions do work sometimes. Questions work well when you have, like, an overwhelming yes reaction. Ah, uh, right. It's like ask them a question, get a yes. Ask them another question, get an answer. Sort of Third question, get a yes. Kind of and then get them in that funnel, and then there, you might close them. Yeah, I mean, so in love, if, if it's like, I, yes, I want this, but, I mean, th that really kind of happens that you have one, like, very, very precise thing that is clear and relevant and provides value while asking questions, so that can be quite gotcha. difficult. Gotcha. So I would start with the clear value proposition, and then I would experiment with the two other versions. Let, let's take a quick detour here, Michael. I, I, earlier before you got on, uh, Jeff was expressing to me his, his, his extreme... Uh, frustration with dealing with some clients of his, and, and a lot of times I've uh, I've also experienced this myself uh, doing web work for clients. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times clients don't understand. You know, it's not always about the looks. It's not even sometimes about the appearance. It's about the copy. And it's about what's being said. Uh, how, in your in your experience working, you know, from you know in, in an agency, let's say, how do how do you get 
how do you get clients to focus more or less on the the looks and the imagery and stuff, and let's let's focus on the messaging first, and then maybe build out the image you know imagery in the site itself. Well, I mean, in in some cases, I mean, I, I'm sure you know what I mean, right? I mean, you've been. I, I totally know. I know exactly what you mean. Okay. I just want to say that in some cases it might be the right thing to work with the imagery or the layer or whatever, and in, in a lot of cases it would be the copy though. And in, in, I, in, in most cases I see that you could you know start with the copy and yeah. just make it really really clear and relevant to start with. I, for me, the way I found out a good way to do it is that I've been well I've been doing this for a while now. So and from the beginning, I, I, from a from I started my first blog, I started posting a lot of case studies. So I post case studies and case studies and case studies. And they just, you know, they, instead of, you know, sh uh, showing, uh, uh, sh uh, what's <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of telling it, I'm showing it. Uh, okay. So in a lot okay. of cases, I can I can back up what I'm saying with specific yeah. case studies and go bam, 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 bam. So this is okay. what I see. I'm not omniscient. I cannot tell you if this is the right thing, but all my experience would tell me that this would be the right thing. Also, if you can start doing a couple of tests. That's where traffic comes in handy. Then you can give the client the oh my god experience, and then they'll probably start trusting what you have to say. Yet another way of doing it is to perform a user test and show the client the results of the user test, because they might be listening to what you're saying and, and say, oh, he's an expert. It makes sense. But as soon as they hear their own users going, uh, for example, I have no idea what this copy means. Well, that really makes them listen. So that would be another way of doing it. Gotcha. Um, yeah. It's just a lot of, a lot of, sometimes we, uh, a lot of clients come and say, you know, we need a new website, or it needs to be refreshed, needs to be updated. But mm -hmm. they, they're, they're going about it, in my opinion, especially after talking to guys like yourself. And there's another fellow we had on several months ago, Pep Lodge, which you obviously yeah. know. I love mm -hmm. that guy. And we, we spoke uh, at length about conversion, about copy, and all this stuff. And, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a designer. Uh, this is what I do a lot of my time. Uh, and I focus on the visual aspects, actually. But I've become more and more sensitive to the messaging and to the CTAs yeah, yeah, yeah. and to the flow. And I kind of want to sit the client down and say, you know what, John, Jack, whatever your name happens to be, let's set, let's set back for a second. Let's think about what are you selling here and how can we best sell it and then maybe focus the imagery around that. Uh, Jeff, why don't you explain a little bit about what some of your frustrations you're dealing with. Yeah, well, like you said, it's sort of the expectations, and you know, my approach is always, uh, what do you want to accomplish with this? Let's get the fundamentals right. Let's get the functionality right, uh, which is to accomplish the, the the sell, right, or whatever it is that the website's point is. Which uh, for a lot of companies, you know, like, um, or just you know, like a little five-page website to kind of say, here's what we do, uh, but they don't really sit and think like, who is this for? Who's going to be visiting it? You know, and it mm -hmm. may be very, very few people too. Uh, right, because they're a small type of company, and they get totally caught up in the looks and in the branding and their, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the little things that like turn their levers. And uh, if you don't do a really good job of setting up their expectations to say, here's how we're going to approach this, here's what's important, here's the priorities, they're going to look at it through their lens, which is uh, the logo is not big enough, you know, or, yeah. or whatever the, uh, you know, whatever their fallback kind of like, um, you know, it's just not what they wanted, mm. sort of thing. And, and well, to me, I think that the functionality is really bar none the most important thing. Is those call to actions and like accomplishing the uh, the mission. Yep, definitely. Well, I mean, I've performed tons of tests where I've seen the same thing. That I mean, if the, if, um, the message is the most fundamental thing of marketing. I mean, if if, if you don't have a, a a a good relevant value proposition, if if your product isn't fitting needs and you can't explain to people why it's you know why it's the right thing, well, you might as not well market anything. So that's very fundamental, I'd say. And I, like you just mentioned yourself, it's about setting expectations, and also you can turn it around to an advantage where you can say, well, maybe instead of using this huge budget right now and just blowing it, well, you know, you could divide it into smaller portions, and then we can find out, you know, little tweaks that will get us the right place. And it depends on the, on 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 the case, but in 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 some instances, you know, you can walk a client through it and say, okay, so what is your product? What does it do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so on the page here, can you point at one thing that makes me clearly understand what you just told me? You know, and in some cases, they'll be hard pressed to do that. Actually, and say, okay, so if, if I I know the story now, and your copy doesn't explain it to me, and you can't explain it to me, then how do you expect someone who's never heard of you before to actually convert? No matter how big your logo is or how beautiful you know the landing page is. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, yet another ap ap approach. Um. Uh, I had an example. I just lost it. Uh. You know, I, I was going to oh, say. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, Michael, that 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 even after sp speaking with Pep, you know, from Conversions Excel, I, I got the impression 
that a lot of this stuff that we're talking about right now really is not in the purview of the small business uh, type of owner's mindset. They're looking for the brochure where type of thing, you know, just a lovely looking thing and uh, sort of telling them a little bit about what they do in a contact us kind of thing. So I really felt it was sort of the purview of the medium to large size business because they seem to have the traffic, they seem to be really caring about how to squeeze more out of their site and out of their web presence and uh, they have the budgets quite frankly to be tweaking this stuff and you know that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, sure, but, uh, you know? but that's, the, I mean, a, a way of getting a competitive advantage you know, is to start focusing on this, on this stuff very early on. I have okay. actually have a very specific uh, example actually from a startup company. Okay. That was one I was thinking about before. Also in relation to copy and content. So uh, at one point I was sharing an office with a guy who just uh, started a company. It takes a long time to explain about it. It was reasonably complicated. And um, so he had his website and, uh, he uh, you know, I was just giving some advice. And I was kind of getting at, at the point that, you know, I th my hypothesis was that you just didn't have enough content, uh, you know, to make people understand, you know, the beauty of his product and his offer. And he was saying, yeah, you know, it's the internet. We don't blah blah blah. You know, people don't read. People scan all those other, you know, kind of best practice things. And I and so I said, okay, so but yesterday you had a meeting with a client in the next room, and I could hear what you guys were talking about. Oh yeah, that was isn't that guy? And I said, okay, so I. Roughly, I'd say he asked you 25 questions. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, so is that exceptional that he asked you 25 questions? He said, no, no, no. They always ask us a bunch of questions. And then I'd say, okay, so what makes you think that your website doesn't have to answer those 25 questions? I mean, if you're getting those questions physically when you're talking to people, what makes you think that they won't have the same questions when they, you know, see your, your homepage for the first time? He's like, yeah, good point. <laughs> so, you know, making that connection, and I, I think there is, some there's some kind of weird assumption, but again, it's kind of these back, best practice rules that are making everything a lot more kind of difficult. So, you know, you'd be like, you know, there's like different camps. Would be like this one camp would say you should always have seven page long, you know, landing pages with ridiculous amounts of copy, or you should only write 200 words on on a web page because everything. Uh, more than that is just noise and say, well, I mean, maybe it depends on the context. If, you're, if your startup is just about, you know, getting people to accept a free app or whatever, well, then that probably won't take as much convincing as if you're, you know, selling something that costs $10,000. So, you know, you, you really have to find the right solution for yourself. Right. And this kind makes, of in, in getting, make, make. getting to understand your target audience and, and just thinking logically and working and Maybe using techniques like, for example, saying, so what are the top five questions we get? Have we answered them on the landing page, for example? Right. Or, um, or is there anything we can leave out? Is this excessive information? Or could we maybe could we organize the page in such a way that the, like the first 10% you know, pretty much sum everything up, and the guys who need more information, they can scroll down? So. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I just... Um... You know, I I've surveyed the landscape with all these sort of sort of free uh, website builders and the sort of the the Wix and the Weeblies and all those that let you build websites quickly. All hmm. the tons of WordPress templates out there for small business owners, and very little of them, almost 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 none of them, cover <clears throat> sort of copywriting. Sort nope, of cover like get, get 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 to know your target audience. Let let's write this homepage with these sort of answers in mind or these benefits in mind. None of them walk you through that that sort of thought process when you're building it. There's there's none of that. It's just a pretty picture and a simple template. And uh, <laughs> I'm serious. And it just feels it feels like it's kind of not ignored, but just not really thought about and not really accented enough. Uh, no, definitely. I, I think it's because it's it's maybe. I mean, short term is not in their interest to make it too complicated. It's easier just to get people to, you know, put in a few bucks and put up a web page. And put up a I think that's page. that's probably the the problem. But again, but then on the other hand, you know, I mean, motivation is 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 uh, is key, is paramount. So if you have a product that you know for some reason people have heard about or you know you, you virally the message gets around you can have the worst website in the world and you probably be hugely successful because people have already made up their mind before they even see a website right. but you know that doesn't happen too often so in most cases it really makes sense to to make the user experience as logical and as easy and you, as you know as a designer and uh, Jeff, as a web developer, I mean, we're, we're not experts in copy. What are some good resources that you found that really helped you come up with good headlines and 
uh, that kind of thing? Are you just going on other websites, or what were some of the best well, tips you have? I mean, I've there? I've learned a lot from uh, from Mech Labs, from Marketing Experiments, and Marketing Sherpa, uh, Doctor Flint McLaughlin is one of my my uh, all time uh, heroes. Okay, okay, hold on, slow down a little bit. So, which one? Oh, you mentioned a couple of resources already. Marketing Sherpa. Yeah, it's kind of under the same thing. It's it's like the mother company is Mech Labs, and they have Marketing Sherpa and Marketing Experiments, mm -hmm. but it's, marketing it's experiments. Okay. Yeah. So and Dr. Min Dr. Flint McLaughlin is like the brains behind originally the brains behind the operation, okay. and I mean I've I've learned a lot from them. And they have, for example, they have different online courses that are really uh, awesome. Not very many of them go specifically on uh, on copywriting, but they have, for example, a course, uh, a certification course on value proposition, which you can learn a lot from. And that will have huge impact on the rest of your copywriting as well. And they have a landing page optimization course where they also cover uh, cover some of the fundamentals of uh, you know landing page copy. So that's a great resource. Um, uh, you know, but general uh, general uh, optimization stuff. I mean, Pep's blog, Conversion Excel, is an awesome resource. I yeah. say the Kissmetrics blog, uh, Unbounce, their blog. Um, there's a lot of this. this uh, Copy hackers. Just there's a lot of inspiration there Copy also. Hackers, yeah, yeah, good stuff. But I think. I, th I think the main thing is probably, I mean, if I were to hire a copywriter to help me right now, I would not look for someone who, who kind of in the application world. I, I, I'm a wordsmith, and I love coming up with, uh, you know, stuff that makes people dream or whatever. I would I'd go for someone who says, uh, man, it's fascinating on the Internet. You can actually test and you can optimize, and you actually figure out what's in the people's minds, and you can make yeah. a copy that actually kind of fits. Someone with a bit more of an analytical angle. Yeah, someone analytical with, angle, right, right. Yeah, maybe someone who's kind of like more of a problem solver and, and just generally interested in kind of why people make specific decisions and how you can kind of impact yeah. what they're doing. I, I think the psychology of the customers really is important to try to get into their shoes to understand where they are so that you can present the right messaging. Uh, what are some other ways that, like as a startup, like, you know, I really believe in optimizing, even when you have very few people, to try to make the most of those visitors uh, by optimizing them. What are some of the best ways early on? I mean, just doing user testing, like should I just you know, put up my page, grab somebody at Starbucks or a coffee shop, put them in front of the, the website and kind of get their reaction to it? Or, or what are, I mean, is that valuable early on? Well, I mean, there are tons of different ways of doing it. I mean, I mean user testing is, is also an area that, you know, you can get, get someone who knows a lot more about it than me to, to talk about. But, but, I mean, generally getting feedback uh, from, from the right people, of course, is... is, is you know, very, very interesting. And doing, I mean, there are different services you can use for, you know, uh, organized user tests. Or, I mean, um, you know, Craig Sullivan, who's, who's one of, like, the, the best optimizers out there, and I'm happy to call him my friend. He had an example where he, you know, instead of, like, ordering a huge uh, user test, you know, he was like, he, he has kind of a gorilla uh, angle, like I do. We like to get started quickly, you know, once the momentum is there. So, I mean, he, right. he was talking about once he went, he, they're, they're testing, a, a, like, mobile uh, Platform. They went to the pub and they bought people beers and they had them go through it and think aloud. So you know that would be one of doing it. Or like you're saying, to go to Starbucks or whatever. I think the main thing about user testing is that you don't get people who are professional user testers. You know, to go through the user test. That's probably right. pitfall number one. You know, yeah. you want the real reaction. You don't want an expert going, ah, I can move it, man. Because then yeah. you should get like an expert instead. So the, yeah, I, I think just paying attention, thinking logically, and and also, I mean, really, really focusing on, I guess, a couple of different aspects. One. Uh, is is it easy to understand what a product is going to do? I mean, do, is it is it is it simple to understand why we should you know invest our time or our email address or our money or whatever it is to get some you know more knowledge? Secondly, is it is it easy to move around the website? Yeah, you're saying just structure wise, uh, UX wise, um, uh, in, information architecture wise, you know, is is it logical to move through the website? Right. Uh, you know, uh, iron out whatever friction you can find, and then of course also try to go for you know uh, a beautiful design. But I, I mean, if you can if you can get like those these things to work together, well, that's perfect. So, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of times I think that you know a beautiful design is like like you were saying like the thing that gets the main focus without having all the other steps kind of work. Yeah, it just, you know, I know from my own background, I tend to be focused mostly on the visual, and I to always accent that I'm always looking on the web for all these really cool, beautifully designed things. But, um, you know, uh, copywriting 
and optimizing those CTAs and stuff and the user flows and all that kind of thing is so huge and I just think it needs I you know it, there's no as far as I know there's no site out there that shows the best uh, you know websites that have the best copy you know ranked by best copy usually it's like here is the you know the best websites built being built and they're usually about the design or some cool JavaScript animation or whatever you want to call it and, and you know there's no, you know, so the access, so the focus in the web design industry specifically is about the looks and about the, you know, the way it moves and functions and that kind of thing, as opposed to the human psychology, you know, about getting them. To yeah, that. totally. And uh, but I, again, well, it's, it's uh, everything supports, you know, all the elements support each other. So you know, for example, with web copy, I mean, if you can't read the copy, well, then it's never going to have any, have any impact, of course. So you know, you need to have a design that kind of, you know, supports the copy also and makes it easy to read. Uh, you know, so so you can't really have you know perfect copy without perfect design. Right, that's true. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, you have to, your design's got to be there to be legible and all that. But but yeah, so I, I'm more, I'm for myself just to make sure that I'm keep myself balanced. I'm definitely learning more and more about optimization and about copy, and uh, I'll definitely be checking out Marketing Sherpa and some of the other resources you mentioned earlier. Sure. So, I, but I, I think the main the main thing is is kind of with testing and optimization is like. Two things. Well, I'd, I'd say that optimization testing are kind of go hand in hand because, uh, you know, the only way to know that you're actually optimizing is to know if it's working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the word optimize gets like uh, thrown around pretty liberally. Uh, but you know, as until you know that you have better results, you haven't optimized anything. <laughs> right. And I've, I mean, I've done, every, I've, pref I've made every mistake you can make. Pretty much, or well, a lot of them, anyways. <laughs> Most of them, I think the, there are tons more mistakes I'm going to make, but I made a hell of a lot of mistakes when it comes to optimizing and testing. So I'm learning by doing. Um, but but the main thing I've learned is that you, man, no matter how much experience you have, it's it's pretty arrogant to think that you all can always guess the right thing. And if you aren't, you know, testing, if you aren't getting data to back up whether what you're doing is actually working, well, then you're just, you know, you're relying on guesswork, and that's just a dangerous strategy. Right. So, so you know, start start out slowly. Uh, you know, once you build up the traffic, start testing. You know, um, spend your money where where it makes sense. Uh, you know, always you know have a clear hypothesis, a clear idea of the goals, what you want to achieve with your test. You know, um, and 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 don't don't assume <laughs> that just because Amazon is doing it is going to work for you also because you're not Amazon. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just this stuff is so hard uh, and complicated and trying to figure out how to parse it and like, okay, let's just do one or two things this week or this month, yeah. you know. So I'm just trying, uh, startups have so many things pulling at them and uh, web designers, same thing, dealing with their clients. Yeah. How do you how do you use this kind of stuff? How, how can you make it actual? One, one thing I'd like to bring up uh, from the point of view you're mentioning, well, I think if it's your own startup, you have one advantage, which is you already uh, are familiar with the psychology of your customers a little better. When you're like a web designer or you're a consultant, you kind of have to get familiar with this other company's product and services and philosophy real quick. Um, how do you deal with that? Like as a consultant in this space or as a you know random web developer building a website for someone, you know maybe you're just not that interested in their copy because you're not that familiar with their company. Yeah, you, well, that's do the, you find yourself having to dive in to get um, up to speed? Yeah, well, I mean that, that, that's that, that's a very good point, and I, I think I mean one mistake. If I'm not being too bold, calling it a mistake, is to get one guy, for example, a developer, to do everything for you. Because you know, I would I would be insane to, to ask me to do to develop me because <laughs> I'm not good at it, man. Or you know, I mean, I would never ever uh, you know take money for someone to to, to do like a PPC uh, you know setup for a, a, you know for an AdWords account because I simply just I, I'm not very good at it. You know, so it makes sense to get people who you know different people to to, to work with different angles. You know, and also just you know. You just work better if you think it's exciting and you're interested in it. So, I mean, yeah, get get in, and maybe instead of just getting one, you know, company to do everything for you, then maybe you know, pick out some some individuals who, who who get excited about doing whatever it is you want them to help you with. So, yeah, that that's that's definitely a problem. And then, well, then there's an issue with, uh, with with you know, budgets and stuff if you're a startup. I mean, I've I've helped a couple of startups and just just done some free. Free, uh, just little things, you know. For example, this Danish startup I, I help now with just some different copy for some buttons and stuff. And they 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 had just gotten to a traffic level where it makes sense to to, to start testing and. Uh, what well, exactly? They, they some, uh, what what exactly is that traffic level? We're we're talking 500 people uh, a week or a day or 
Uh, what would be a decent traffic for, for somebody like yourself to get in there? Well, I mean, I, 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 you'd, 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 it's, it's really, really difficult to say, but I mean, if, if I look at a, a specific landing page and it, for example, has, you know, 100 visitors a month or something, I'd go, you know, well, that, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, if, if you'd say that, just to be conservative, you'd say, well, maybe you have a conversion rate of, of 2%, you know, and then you can, you know, and if you have to split that on two different variants, you know, you can start doing the math and you can see that it's going to take a hell of a long time unless you have you know, a ridiculous, a huge impact with, with whatever change you're making. So, you know, I, I would, if, if I were to help someone and if we're going to help them for free in order to get a case study wherever, I would probably set the limit at, I don't know, five, ten thousand visitors a month on a landing page. Gotcha. But that, that, that's, that's if, if, you know, if I were to get involved like that. Um, gotcha. gotcha. So, yeah, so we're looking at a 5,000 visitors per month hitting it. That, that gives you a decent sample size to play with and try, try running different experiments. Well, you could go with smaller also. I mean, it really depends on, I mean, the whole thing about having, like, valid data is, is, is how much of a risk are you willing to take that your numbers are going to be off, you know. So it depends on how much of risk. I mean, it, and if you're, a new, if you're a startup and you're new, you know, you can start running tests and then you can, you can go out of limb and say, well, we're not completely, you know, this is not really conclusive yet, this data, but, it, it, you know, everything at this point points to the fact that this one will do better. If Whether it will do 10% or 50% better, we cannot say that for certain right now, but everything points to the fact this one's going to perform better. Let's implement and keep going. So, you know, you have to kind of be very agile uh, in the beginning. It, it's, it's just, I have to tell you, Michael, this stuff is really great, but it's just not really practical for so many people because it just requires a lot of work and kind of focus on it. Um, and it's ideal to get somebody like yourself on and be like, you know what, I I'm trying to get more people to come to the site, I'm working on the traffic or I'm working on the product, let's just bring in Michael and hit let him run all these tests because I just don't have the headspace for this stuff. And for small business people, like I mentioned earlier, this is not even in their radar, not even close. Um, so, I, I mean, I, it's, it could be a huge opportunity for a subscription service for somebody to go in and for a small monthly fee do optimizations for them. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, definitely, definitely. But I mean, yeah, well, that that I mean depends on. I mean, if if you're really passionate about it, I mean, I I've, I've known tons of guys who've started getting into to some really interesting stuff just because they you know they they get a lot of time to it and you just read up and get get you know smarter. And that's you know that's what I usually do when I find out a new area I want to get involved with. Is I have this time to do it. But yeah, that is an issue and it is complicated and. And that's why, you know, that's why not everybody is doing it. And that's yeah, why man, it is. It's complicated, right. man. It's hard enough getting a site up for a lot of these people and then just running split tests and doing A-B and all this stuff. Oh, wow, this stuff's crazy. I don't even know yeah. what the hell to write. I don't even know how to come up with the headline. I'm still worried about that. Forget about running split tests. I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to do copywriting. So in my opinion, Michael, uh, don't get me wrong. I think it's awesome. I love that chat that we had with Pep, and I was so inspired. But it's been months, Jeff, since we've spoken to Pep, and I haven't really done any of the split testing stuff. It's just, uh, it, you know, it takes time. You really do have to kind of dive deep and get into it. You really have to. Yeah. You know, I think, I think like you're saying, though, it's good to read up and get educated on because it kind of starts getting you in that mindset before you're forced to be in it. Um, and it, it always applies, right? You're always writing copy. And I think uh, the better you do at it, first take, the, you know, the better you are uh, overall. Yeah, totally, and and I mean, I, I used to kind of be an evangelist for how easy it is to do testing and optimization, but I, I got to say, I mean, the more experience I get, I'm, I'm I'm being a little bit more careful of just saying, wow, it's easy and simple because you know, I've I've learned a lot in the meantime, and it, it is it is complicated, it is difficult, but I mean, you I mean, but you can learn it. I mean, it's it's I would say it's easier than I don't know learning how to code HTML from the bottom. Right, of the yeah, depends yeah, on how your brain works and stuff, but you know there are a lot of things that are really difficult. So, but but on the other hand, you can't you know you can't you can't learn everything. I I'd love to be an analytics expert. I'd love to be you know you're great at CSS. I'd love to be whatever you know behavioral scientist and whatever. But you know it's just not a time, not enough not time, time for everything. No, it's just I I see uh, you know I speak to other web designers and of course I know some developers and you know there are some developers out there that are really great at design, but a lot of them aren't. And there are mm. some designers that are horrible developers. They barely come up with the CSS rules to make it work, but uh, if a JavaScript is way out of their league, you know. And then copywriting and conversion split testing is like, well, both of these people are like, oh, yeah, I know I should be. I know I should do this. And, yeah, it's just, I, I'm just saying I, I, think there's a, I think there's a nice nice area there for 
those two groups of people to learn more about this, including oh, startup yeah. startup people in general. Definitely, definitely. But I mean, I mean, as far as being practical and, and not making things too complicated, I mean, a lot in a in a, I mean, like a lot of the initial steps are pretty logical. I mean, if you go through your website and really, really try to be critical, try to, I don't know, assume the character of a persona or whatever, and really try to go just from doing a Google search and then clicking your 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 uh, you know the, the the search result and then getting into the page and really trying to say, well, these are the three specific things I'm looking for. What would happen if I click this button? Did I get to the right place? Would I have to go back? You know, try to go through the whole scenario and be really, really critical and say, did I get what I needed? You know, uh, and then I mean, you can use different tools. I mean, you can, for example, start you know, uh, with little um, uh, kiss insights. It's called Qualaruna, I think. You know, like a little pop-up questionnaire. You can ask just simple questions. Right. So I mean. Uh, is what's most important for you, the, the price or the end result, or whatever you know. Just right. start getting a little bit more, you know, uh, insight in, yeah, into the, like the key key points for for your your potential audience. And just I think the main thing is just always being curious and just always kind of you know questioning whether what you got is the right thing or or and 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 trying to put yourself in your customer's shoes. You know, saying yeah. so. If I didn't know anything about this company, would I, from just seeing the top of this page, have any inkling? What it is, or what I have any motivation to continue to click, right. you know, really go down to basics and ask yourself questions like that. Is it clear what we're getting here, or you know, is there a, could there be a completely aim, uh, are we focusing on the right thing in our first five bullet points? You know, is it is it the right thing not to mention the price here? Is it is that really the most important thing for people to know? Often you're missing some of those essential things that people need to know in order to make the right decision. I love so, it. No, it's great. These are very simple, very yes. clear, actionable questions that all site owners, startup owners, should be thinking about in, in terms of how their users are coming through and how possibly converting them into customers. Uh, this stuff is great. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm actually really glad that we got you on today, Michael. Uh, mm -hmm. I love getting conversion uh, copywriting folks on because it just reminds me that I need to start looking at these sites and thinking about this stuff. <laughs> You know. I, I want to mention a, a really great resource. Looks like your uh, your case study page on your website. You want to plug that? Explain that to us real yeah, quick. That's let, a massive list of case studies. Yeah, there's tons there, man. There's also I got my free ebook. Uh, I think there's 17 different case studies in there. There's seven optimization principles. Yeah, there's there's tons of case studies on there. Um, I can, yeah, it's a responsive design. I can see so it's, it's, it's changing a little bit on the on the screen that I can see here. But um. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I found out pretty early on that, that this was actually inspired also by marketing experiments. I, I love seeing all their stuff because they were giving all this stuff away for free and they were always showing these specific examples of how their principles worked. And I mean, most people out there just talking theory and theory can be, you know, can be, can be, um, you know, can, can, can motivate you to start doing something. But but how do you use it in, in practice? So uh, right. I, I like showing very, very specific examples because it makes it very under, uh, easy for people to understand what I'm trying to convey, you know, and the experiences that, I, that I've, I've gained, uh, you know, from, from conducting real tests. It's super and also, helpful, especially for startups who have no experience, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I find it, and I try to do it as simple as possible. I mean, whenever I do a presentation, a live presentation, I, would, I mean, I, 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 I spoke at, uh, at the Conversion Summit in Frankfurt. I had 20 minutes, and I had 17 case studies <laughs> for those 20 minutes. So wow. every time I have a point, I try to back it up with a real example, an example from the real world to say, so you could use it like this, for example. <laughs> and also for me, I mean, the, the best sales tool I have is, 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 is my case studies because, you know, uh, I, as I said in the before the show, I was saying that I, I, I've never spoken of myself as an expert or as a specialist. I guess I find those words to be not very helpful. And, you know, there are tons of specialists out there. What the hell does that mean? Uh, I'd rather, what, what usually happens is that, you know, potential clients, they find my content somewhere and then they start reading, you know, one case study, another case study, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, wow, this guy must be a specialist. Let's talk to him. And I think that's a very powerful thing. And that's exactly... That's showing and not telling it, or that's showing and not selling it, actually. Um, and I find that to be a very, very powerful way of uh, attracting um, uh, customers. I love it, yeah. Showing, not telling. I love that. Yeah. Case and studies. Also, what, what happens in a lot of cases is that, um, that, that when people have seen real examples of your work and the results you've created, especially with numbers on there, well, then they, in a lot of cases, they will be sold on the idea before they talk to you. So that takes a lot of the selling process right, out there. Right, yeah, yeah. You have to yeah. convince them. There it is. There's the hard numbers right yeah. there. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, this totally makes sense, Michael. You're you're an analytical guy. You want a b a equals b b equals c a a equals should equals c. Yeah, yeah. This totally makes sense. It's absolutely <laughs> right along. This is very analytical. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no bullshit. It's free of the bullshit, and we appreciate that. Honestly, <laughs> I try, I try honestly, to swap the bullshit. Yeah, it's just this, this stuff is complicated, man. It really is. It is. There's a lot of there's so many things that we change. Like, what should I change? How do I prioritize that? Uh, too much stuff. Let's just focus on something else. Yeah. You know? so. I, I think probably probably like the the main thing to really dr- nail it is is you know in a, in a lot of cases you make decisions based on what you as a business person likes or what you from your angle find to be the best solution, well, that doesn't really matter. You know, what you need to find out is what's the best solution for your users and your potential, potential customers, you know. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's that's where the money is at long term. Right, right. Get in their shoes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. a lot of times if you're a design a consulting firm, they're, you know, the, your client's paying the bills, and if they want the logo bigger, then they want the logo bigger. It, it may not be that interesting to their user base, but... Yes, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, but it helps to have all these case studies to show. Hey, Absolutely. making the logo twice as big doesn't really help the conversions, fellas. Look, yeah. So, yeah, it's totally. great. <laughs> it's great having this ammo, backing it up with the ammo. That really helps. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah data points. Sure. Should do, uh, should do uh, that's actually a good idea for a blog post. Do a blog post with with twenty one liners you can use <laughs> in order to convince clients. Right yeah. there, we go. That'd be great. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Well, it, I, again, uh, Michael, it's been a pleasure having you on today, man. If people want to get a hold of you, uh, what's a general email or something you feel comfortable with? Well, I mean, uh, uh, content verb. You can leave, uh, you know, a comment on the blog. You can, you can uh, check me out on Twitter. That's, you know, the Twitter handle is just content verb. You can go to Facebook. You know, Facebook um, uh, forward slash um, or um, content verb, or you can write me at Michael uh, at content verb. So. Okay. Yeah, man. Feel free. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously, we'll we'll stay in touch with you and, and see what you got coming up with next. Uh, actually, let, let's get in there really quickly. Well, what is what's on your roadmap here? More case studies? How? Wh- I mean, are, are you a one man operation? Are you going to try building this thing? Or well, I'm kind of I'm kind of a one man army. I mean, I have uh, I have two designers I often work with, and I have uh, I have a developer I work with. And I just hired a guy, a freelancer, to assist me, and he's kind of a UX uh, front-end developer, analytics guy. Yeah, he, he has a really interesting profile, so he's he's been helping me out with some work. But I don't have right now. I don't have any ambitions to kind of you know whatever uh, start an agency because I didn't particularly like working at an agency when I worked at one. So okay. I'm not too keen on on giving someone else that experience. Uh, but I mean, I've been I've been doing uh, lately. I've been doing a lot of workshops for businesses. It turns out that a lot of businesses are really interested in just understanding what the hell this is all about. You know, so yeah, maybe do a yeah. five-hour workshop and you give them some some show them case studies, give them some optimization principles, and then from there you go well, uh, spend the last four hours specifically talking about you know going through the website and you know, questioning different things, coming up with with treatments and solutions and stuff. And I've I've been talking at conferences all over the world, uh, traveling a lot. Uh, yeah, next week I'm going to London for the conversion conference. And yeah, London I know. Dev. Didn't I, last time we spoke to Pep, Jeff? Do you remember? He said he was gonna do a conference or something. I don't know if you heard of this. Uh, yeah, I think maybe there was you know, a conversion conference or something. Some conversion conference that he was starting or he was going to. I couldn't remember. But. Well, I mean, he he has his own thing in in um, in Estonia. I spoke at it actually this summer. And, oh, is that um, right? Okay. We both spoke at a conversion uh, summit in Frankfurt, and okay. um, I know that he spoke at conversion conference in, I think it was in San Fran. I'm not quite sure in the state somewhere. I'm speaking at it in London, so <laughs> that's okay. kind of a very nice. Very nice. I'm telling you, yeah, this, this is a, yeah, this is a glad, growing. Glad, yeah, glad to get this in front of more developers and startup entrepreneurs that uh, you know the the resources are here available for them. So uh, it's a start. But, uh, I think for all of us, I mean, uh, as far as, as you know, getting business and stuff, I think it's, I mean, it's it all comes down to networking and w- whether you're doing networking by showing up physically at, at the conferences, at events, and you know, showing what you can do and helping people, and <laughs> mainly not being there to sell your own stuff, but actually just to help people. Right. Uh, you know, you're doing it online, whatever. You know, it's it's all about networking and you know, getting getting out there and get people to kind of you know talk about you. And I think that for all startups, that's important. And uh, 
I don't know, in my philosophy, you know, the more you put out there for free, the more you're going to get out, get to get back. I mean, that's what content marketing is all about. And right. if, if you're genuinely, 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 genuinely <laughs> interested in in helping people and you're generous with your knowledge, in my experience, that's a lot better strategy than being greedy about your knowledge and actually, you know, going out there hardcore selling stuff. Right. Uh, and I. Th I think that's where it's, you know, there's some really interesting examples out there. I think the un unbounce.com, their blog is, is a beautiful example of, you know, just it's incredible what they've done in such a short time. Right. Um, no, we're huge fans of giving away as much content as possible. Content yeah. Content. Yeah, absolutely. Just like the stuff we're doing today. Um, so, yeah, uh, thanks for coming on today, Michael. Uh, we thanks love this me. stuff. Uh, it scares the bejesus out of me, but we love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, yeah. that that was my free book. That might uh, give. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. That'll help. It'll. It's just one more thing to do. You know, so many things to do. One oh, more. tell me about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, now we gotta worry about split testing. No. Yeah. I'm already a, a, a full stack engineer. Just gotta add another uh, hat to the. Traits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pick one from the box. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, exactly. now, actually, now that you mentioned it, you know, you say you have a couple of designers, you got this developer, you're doing the conversion and and the copying. I think that that whole trifecta, I think that is the best team. Is you have your, you, you know, the conversion uh, guy, you've got your front end guy, and you've got your back end guy. I think that that's a great combo. So. Yeah, and you got your analytics guy, and you got your PPC guy, and you got your. Oh, uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> it never <laughs> ends with all guy. these guys. Yeah, that whole army. Yeah, uh, yeah. Awesome. that's how it is. <coughs> All right. Well, thanks again for coming on. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Bye. Bye.